Danielle is over in North Carolina. Hi, Danielle. How are you? Hey, Dave. I'm doing good. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Sure. So um, down here in North Carolina, I have a small um, gourmet peanut processing company that I started back in 2009. I came from an agricultural background and kind of ventured off and started this peanut processing company. Um, and through the through the years since 2009, have had ups and downs, both personal and business, had some things personally going on that unfortunately affected the business too. And I've just, over the last probably four years or so, it's just been really um, more of a, a tornado whirlwind type thing. And I've made a lot of bad financial decisions. Um To quote you, when you talk about dumb butt stuff, you know, my picture's probably in the dictionary beside that word, (laughs) because that's what I've done. Um, And I'm just trying, I have, trust me. Um, So I'm just trying to get on the right track and stay there. And it's kind of like I've... Is all the personal crap stabilized? Um, Somewhat. Um, I had three deaths. Well, so in 2014, I had I went through a divorce, which mm-hmm. was very difficult. And mm-hmm. then, um, and two, and right after the divorce, like three or four months later, my mom had a major heart attack and had to move in with me. Mm-hmm. Then in 2016, my oldest sister was diagnosed with cancer, and she moved in with me, and I took care of her until she passed away. Um, during this time, I had to relocate the business because of having gone through the divorce. And so I purchased a warehouse here in our little town and was doing renovations in it to get it um, up where we had to build in rooms and and get everything FDA certified and everything. So I was doing that, taking care of my sister who was passing away, taking care of my mom. Um, My sister passed away in 2017. Then my mom passed away in 2018 and then my baby sister, who was 13 years younger than me, passed away very unexpectedly in 2019. Oh so <laughs> with all of that going on and trying to you know, keep the business going, and like I say, during um, a couple of those years, I was um, going through dealing with contractors and renovating this building and, and making those decisions, and just it kind of had me stretched really thin. Um, have you so, been making like say, money through all of those years? We have been making sales and I mean, how we are you have, eating? Um, are you, are you making a profit <laughs> all of those years? We I mean, have, you're talking about nine yeah. years here of tragedy. Yeah, it's, it's been difficult. It's, it's I mean, been, but, I mean, how uh, have you, I, um, this sounds like this was business was barely operating. I can't imagine it was making enough for you to even pay your own personal bills. Yeah, it's it, it's been tight. It's been very tight, which is one of the reasons that. Okay, so give me an example. In twenty twenty one, what was your gross revenues and net profit? In twenty twenty one, it was about four hundred eighty thousand dollars in sales. Uh, and what was your profit um, on last that? year? The profit was in the negative. There was okay. How did you pay your bills? How did you buy groceries for Danielle? So I did. I did draw a salary. I was drawing a salary of about thirty thousand um, dollars. Yeah, but the, the thing lost money, and you don't have the money to fund the loss. And I put savings back into the. That's what I've done through the years. Is oh, you've had a big settlement money. from the divorce. I did have some settlement from the divorce. How I also much had some savings that I kept up? How much? Um. Did I put back in the business? No. How much money did you get from the divorce? Uh, it was right around $120,000. How much of that's left nine years later? Um, Not much. Probably about 15000 So you've been living out of that in the years that the business didn't make money. Right. Yeah. That, okay. And I couldn't figure out the math. That this is what now it's at yeah. least logical. Well, okay. So now, yeah, and the thing, so now the you're not making money. So making why are we still doing peanuts when we lose money? Well, that's kind of the situation. That's kind of what I have been thinking through the years. Is you know, it's like there's potential there. How long I, has it been since you made a profit? Mm, it's been about five years. About four years. Okay. This has got to stop. This is not a business. This is a bad hobby. 
So you need to set yourself a deadline that you have to become profitable in a, in, in a few months. Why are you not make? you don't have these things priced high enough to make a dadgum profit, and yet you called them gourmet peanuts. Right. Well, the biggest thing that I've done that I think caused the no profit is because I took out stupid loans, and they were high interest rates. And How much debt have you got? It just kind of, um, right now it's about about $200,000 in debt. That's uh-huh. the And do you own the warehouse renovation. that you renovated? I do, yes. And what is it worth? Um, it's worth about 400,000. And what do you owe on it? About 200. Is that the 200 we're talking about? Yeah, that's the 200 I'm talking about. So you have $200,000 worth of equity. So if you close shop today, you sell the warehouse, you got 200,000 in your pocket. Right. And you're and you're debt free. But what I'm trying to do, I mean, because the business has sales, it has potential, it has... When? I missed um, it. <laughs> You're not making any money. And that, and that's what I'm trying to figure out without having, without closing, because I've, I've looked at that, too, about just... just okay, I, I am not going to participate in a hallucination. I'm happy to participate right. in a dream. But a dream has to have a place where it comes down out of the clouds and starts having some reality to it. I got five years of business losses. Yes, you had personal tragedies and you didn't have your eye on the ball, but you got to give yourself and me in this conversation, you're, you're more important than me in this conversation, a reason to believe we're going to be profitable very soon or we need to say, I'm hallucinating, delusional. Right. And I guess that's the reason I want to make the call was because I, you know, those have been the thoughts in my mind, but I want to, that's what I'm trying to figure out, you know, drawing that. There has to be a, 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 give me a strategic and tactical change in the next 12 months. That's going to cause you to make $50,000 profit. What are you going to do that causes that to happen in the next 12 months? So what I've done is one, I've cut expenses way back. You can't cut cut expenses enough to get profitable. Right. I, I And I have cut labor back as well. You've I've got to increase your it. margins and increase your sales. And I've, and yeah, and I have taken on, I've, we've just gotten a new client and it's going to be bringing in about, um, probably about $75,000 more in sales with this one customer. Yeah. Um, what is your, what is your margin on co- versus cost of goods sold? Do you know? It's low. It's about 35%. So a bag of peanuts or, or whatever they are, or a jar or whatever we want to call it, however your packaging goes, mm-hmm. um, if, uh, if if the retailer is paying you 10 if whoever you're selling it to is paying you $10, uh, you, got seven, you got 70 cents in this thing, 30, 65 cents in this thing. Right. Sixty-five, six dollars and fifty cents out of ten dollars. No, six dollars. Yeah, yeah, six dollars and fifty cents out of ten dollars. Right. It's for everything. Yeah, when I figure in everything, the cost of of everything, um, labor and everything. Yes, that's about about right. It's about thirty-five to forty percent, depending on whether I'm selling at retail or wholesale. Don't think those margins retail, work in the world of food production, do they? Well, food production is a tight market. I, I know. Um, yeah. But, I, you know, I want to be careful I don't get a bigger truck when I'm losing 20 cents a watermelon, right? Oh, no, that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, all right, so 75000 will add $20,000 to your bottom line, right? Right. So we got to go get we got to go get two more of those or we got to change your pricing. Why is gourmet – what do you um, – it, are, if they're truly gourmet, why are they not selling for ridiculous margins? I'm, I'm, well, I think part of it, I guess, is I'm in line with what some of the other gourmet type peanut companies are in our area or in the eastern part of the are you sell, country. Are you selling to wholesalers and retailers, or are you selling direct to consumer? I'm selling to wholesalers. I have a distributor, and then we also sell retail as well. We have a uh, uh, walk-in store as well as online yeah. presence. 
So I got a buddy of mine that owns a, a five uh, barbecue stores here locally, and he started uh-huh. doing barbecue chickens and putting them in the warehouse and selling them online. And he ended up with a direct to consumer online sales, making more in the, out of the warehouse than he was out of the restaurants. Mm-hmm. And that starts making me think about that for you. Like if you got some kind of crazy cool narrative story and you're on with your great Southern charm uh, on some television shows talking about your gourmet peanuts and people come straight to you. And then we don't really care because we're buying the story because I honestly, as a peanut consumer, I can't tell you the difference between $6 worth and $8 worth. So I'll probably pay you $8 if I liked your story. Right. And I think that's, I think that what I was looking for was from you um, and from the call was just, yeah, what you're giving me, basic honesty, because I kind of figured that's where you were going to go. But with me seeing, I do see potential, and I do see that I have been making some changes, especially this year. Okay, you have um, to have a serious, a, a valid, change. reality-based reason for hope of profit soon, or you got to look at yourself in the mirror and go, my dreamer button's gone too far. And I got, and I'm gonna, and have get, to, I'm gonna have to call it. But you got to have it from a business perspective. You have Henry Cloud talks about necessary endings. I have to have a logical reason for believing things are going to get better. And if I don't, right. other than I'm just being, you know, I'm 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 just in denial. Uh, that that's not a reason. Okay. I, if I just keep persevering, no. If you keep persevering, you're gonna keep getting what you've been getting. So you have to change something to get a different result. Uh, and no pun intended, but we got to change the recipe. You know, I mean, so. Um, that that yeah, and you means you've got to change your your business mix, your brand mix, your pricing. Um, by mix, I mean wholesale. Maybe you need to pick up some retail with some great online marketing and become the place to get wholesale. Or I mean, get uh, online uh, gourmet peanuts in the entire world. You got to get them from Danielle in North Carolina. I mean, everybody knows that, and you got to go there. And that website just goes boom, 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 boom. And you do a YouTube channel or you do whatever and get some business moving there. And you start being ashamed, stop being ashamed of your pricing and quit trying to compete with price because competing with price and dumbing down your price is running you out of business. You've got to get your margins up and you got to get your volume up and you got to get your brand mix, your, your business model mix changed. And if you do those things, maybe there is a, re- a reality based reason for our hope, yours and mine for the future. But if we're going to keep doing what we've been doing and say, oh, we've had some tragedy. Uh, yeah, you had tragedy. So you have a reason to be here. What you've been through is horrible and sad. And I'm, I feel horrible for you. It's a man. You've been through the decade of hell for sure. Uh, and you don't want another decade of hell. So face this music and go, yeah, this, I know how I got here. I got here with all this crap that happened and all this death and these problems and these people I had to take care of and divorces and all this stuff. And, but now I'm here. So for the next decade, I've got to say, this is my reality, and I'm going to take these steps to get this thing moving, or I'm going to go do something else in my life because this is no longer fun. Because i got to tell you, making $30,000 a year working your butt off while you're sitting on a $200,000 asset is not fun. That's not my definition of fun. I want to make some money. I want to make some peanuts in the peanut business. Hello. Let's get this thing moving. All right. I want a jar of them. Send them to me. I'm, I'm crunching on them right now. However, their package jar bag. We never did establish that, did we? All right. So love it. Love it. Love it. I always wondered what a gourmet peanut tasted like. Now I'm going to find out. I'm getting some from Danielle. Hey, Danielle, thanks for calling. <laughs> 